Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I am the editor of this book. I am very pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Loida Garcia Fibo, author of chapter 20, Wellness for Librarians, Innovative Solutions to Foster Transformation. Loida is a Puerto Rican American international library consultant expert in library services to diverse populations and human rights. She serves as San Jose State University School of Information's Health and Wellness Ambassador. Formerly, she was the president of the American Library Association, and she currently serves as a member of the IFLA governing board. Throughout chapter 20, Loida Garcia Vivo explains the critical need for strategies and policies that uphold the overall wellness of library workers. Wellness strategies may include a menu of options such as offering webinars and trainings, providing dedicated space for wellness, and troubleshooting over uh, workflows to combat fatigue and burnout. She highlights that wellness for library workers is not just the responsibility of the supervisor. Instead, it should be a collaborative effort where libraries, library associations, and library and information science programs work together to provide strategies and resources that support library workers' wellness goals. I am so pleased to welcome you, Loida. Oh, hello, Sandy. I'm very happy to uh, collaborate in this project with you. Um, it's um, about a topic that is very close to my heart, wellness, well-being. That's excellent. I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you about it because it's such an important topic for us to uh, focus on in our field. So I'd like to kick off our question in um, our interview today by asking you to just briefly describe your vision for the future of libraries in 2035. Yes, by 2035, libraries will show strong connections between their vision and actions to be responsive in an uncertain world and contribute with positive change to the well-being and the lives of individuals, including library workers. There are many developments happening um, around the world, and I am going to uh, focus on wellness and well-being for our conversation today. Uh, for instance, as per the World Health Organization Geneva Charter for Well-Being, we have an urgency to act to promote well-being and to integrate planetary, societal, community, and individual health and well-being, as well as changes in social structures to support people to take control of their lives and health. So it's a group effort, as you mentioned earlier, that I uh, explained in the chapter. It's a profound change and is considered a fundamental redirection of societal values and action. Without well-being, there cannot be progress, development, or a sustainable world. And libraries have and are increasingly joining these actions. Thank you, Loida. And I was so happy that you took this focus for your chapter because I do think this is a very important um, and not always something that we're um, topic and not something that we always think about or address as directly as you have. As um, if you are thinking about the future of libraries, what are you most concerned about? I am concerned about the apparent so, uh, uh, lack of seriousness libraries still show about the well-being of workers. Uh, there is an apparent belief and uh, that bringing, for instance, chair yoga or pizza to um, work meetings will help boost the uh, wellness of the individuals. And this is a band-aid wellness strategy, and it's not healthy for wellness or for teamwork relationships or for society. And at some point, something is going to give up and the staff will need to take sick leave 
or uh, the library built and then the library could be, you know, short staffed. Teamwork is impact, uh, the well being of the staff and also, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, relationships in the services we provide to our patrons. Um, the employer might need to uh, pay more, for instance, um, because they need to uh, then maybe uh, uh, work on the schedule to hire more staff and, and so on. And so uh, the investment in supporting wellness in different levels in the workplace is important because at the end of the day is going to help uh, their return on investment is higher, is worthy. Um, perhaps um, another area of wellness that I touch on the chapter and I believe firmly is uh, that for us to feel fulfilled and, and with well-being, we also need to pay attention to, um, for instance, salary equity, um, uh, general equality, workplace uh, environment that is um, good and is in good shape for the uh wellness of the staff. And I am happy to explain more as we go into this conversation today. That's great. Thank you, Loida. And on a positive side, what are you most excited about for the future? I am super excited about the amazing momentum wellness, self-care, and well-being is having. For instance, so far, I have taught about wellness to more than 8,000 library workers around the world. It's incredible. Wow, I, just, I, just, I just looked I just looked at the numbers and, and yes, it's true, it's happening. Um, the Croatian Library Association featured wellness at its main topic for the opening of the annual conference two years ago. And I was so happy to be part of that. Um, recently, I've been invited to write chapters of books about wellness for library workers. And um, I'm very optimistic that together, libraries, library um, uh, information science educators and library associations can help uh, to support wellness. It's, uh, the momentum seems increasing and the awareness about everyone on the planet about mental health and well-being is increasing as well. So that is wonderful. Thank you. Um, that's exciting to hear and the widespread um, uh, interest in this important topic. Um, so what do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? Without doubt in my mind, I will say the pandemic. Uh, the awareness of being healthy to make things happen, to provide services to patrons, to have good teamwork with colleagues and to fulfill personal goals, to, to spend time with loved ones and friends. That awareness, uh, is the biggest impact to me in terms of what I'm focusing, uh, during this conversation that is wellness and well-being. Thank you. And what do you think will have the biggest impact on libraries in the next decade? I have to say that it's a super hot topic, but it also is um, entering wellness and is artificial intelligence uh, or generative mm -hmm. uh, intelligence, right? And how it can support well-being efforts. Right now, there is the uh, CES conference happening in Las Vegas. It's the most powerful tech event in the world. And there is an entire track on digital health. And there mm -hmm. is, for instance, a new little device that helps people with deep mobility issues to write or to do something in different devices by moving a little tiny ball inside the mouth with the tongue without having to do anything else. So this is transformative. It's incredible and it is happening. Libraries must find their role um, within that, you know, of course, between besides the digital or AI literacy and how to access information, how it's transformed by, by it and shaped by it. Of course, we're looking into that, but I'm actually exploring digital health 
in the impact in the well-being of library workers with another group I'm collaborating with. And it just started uh, these days. And so it's very new, it's emerging, but we got to get on this as well. That sounds very exciting and such as interesting to hear these um, important developments that are happening in digital health. Um, so I know it's been a few months and I was wondering, has your thinking changed at all since you wrote um, your chapter uh, or are you, do you feel we're kind of in the same yes, place? Um, yes, absolutely. And this, uh, my answer to this question speaks to what I just mentioned about AI, because Everything yeah. is evolving so rapidly. Um, there was not this awareness and I perhaps the visibility and perhaps the disclosure of information from different, uh, companies that, uh, there was not this, uh, when I, when I wrote the chapter and, uh, I, to me, it's very important to observe the trends, societal trends, to inform what we do in libraries. We are part of the world, right? We're part of the society. We are uh, one of the cornerstones of society, and um, it's very important. So, um, yes, that aspect has changed, and um, I'm glad that we have this podcast because then I can introduce it a little bit about uh, digital health and generative AI and how um, that can also have a powerful impact in wellness. Thank you so much. Um, so, you know, there's an, uh, with all these rapid changes and uh, with these focus and important aspect of wellness that you're talking about, do you have any advice for information professionals as they look toward the future in the next 10 years? Yes. My advice is simple. Sleep and eat well including drinking water. I have been researching trends, uh, wellness trends for 2024, uh, skills to survive uh, and being in, in, you know, in good state of well-being in 2024 and beyond. And everything comes down to sleep and eating well. Why? Because, for instance, we... Um, there's important matter here, uh, and is how can we have working environments that support library workers eating and sleeping well? Besides those core areas, for instance, if we have salary equity, if we are short staffed, um, if we don't have, for instance, gender equality, that we need to continue working towards that every day. Um, if we, for instance, need equity for all types of individuals, sustainable prices, uh, practices to work in environments, if we don't have that, if there are no strategies to support us having a more, for instance, equitable workplace, then we cannot eat and sleep well, and then we cannot have long, happy and fine lives. And so it sounds simple, but it's really not. But um, at the core of it is the functioning of the human body. And the human body needs to sleep. And if we don't have some of the things I mentioned um, in place um, in our work or in our lives, personal lives, then we cannot sleep well. And that deteriorates the body insanely, incredible. And then if we don't eat well because there is not enough money or there is not, uh, we are thinking and, and anxious and can't sleep. So it's a bit of a domino. And to me, those two are, are very important for us because librarians are humans and the body is very important. Absolutely. So is there, you know, I think you've touched on this, but I don't know if there's anything more you want to say around what information professionals can do to better prepare for their desired future. Yes, yes. Um, when we talk about well-being, perhaps we don't think about it, but I will, uh, I will uh, stress the importance of advocate advocating for ourselves, and so um, and also for our staff to support working environments that we deserve, that everybody deserve. Read, connect with others, and keep yourself to be a self-advocate or join forces with others because there is strength in numbers. <laughs> That's great, yes. And then what key competencies do you think that librarians will need to thrive in 2035? 
Yes, overall, and I think these are uh, cross-cutting comp uh, competencies, uh, creativity, communication, curiosity, adaptability, empathy, and I will add emotional intelligence, and humor. Humor is the basics. That's, that's great. Okay, I have one final question for you. And so... What I'm asking all the people in, who are um, interviewing is to please define your view of the future of libraries in six words. Yes, um, the future of libraries ought to be inclusive, innovatively healthy, empowering, inspiring, sustainable, and democratic. Excellent. Thank you, Loida. So, Loida, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'd like to thank you for your contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with you today about your vision for the future of libraries. Thank you so much. And um, I hope everybody gets on the wellness track very, very soon. Excellent. And um, I also would like to thank um, those of you for attending this webcast with Loida Garcia Fibo, author of Chapter 20, Wellness for Librarians, Innovative Solutions to Foster Transformation. To view additional, informa uh, additional author webcasts from this Library 2035 webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen. And thank you for attending.